okie dokie, skim scammity, flim flammity, shim shammity. Allowing him to come to your house for a whole week, screw you up. Then disappear with the dingling and the $4,000. at the door. You're just smiling this morning. All of your love is wishing you well. What's up guys? It's Tuesday and you know what it is? It's time to review and recap the Queen's Supreme Court with Special Code Judge Sydney Starr. Let's get into it. Okay, guys. So if you don't know who Sydney Starr is, Sydney Starr is a trans woman that was burning up the streets of Atlanta with the build snitch child. Her number one victim. Okay. And we know Sydney Starr is a trans woman, even though I think she got a whole vagina now. I'm not sure whether or not you still call them trans woman when they got a whole vagina. They're like a woman woman when they get a uh a uh, whole vagina, but Sydney Starr was old ninja because she was throwing dudes in a trick bag, making them think that she was a woman, and for real, she was a trans woman. See, that's how niggas get hurt. Okay, even Maddie will tell you that. That's how a nigga get hurt. You can't be telling them damn dudes that you're a woman, then when they get you to the room, you got a whole ding dong that untucks. You can't do that. But anyway, child, her main victim child was Chingy. Poor Chingy. Chingy was like, what? I don't know this lady. What is she talking about? I didn't do nothing to her child. She was lying on rappers and everything. That thing was crazy. She still need to walk around with that thing in her honor. You hear me? You know, she cannot go nowhere that is not a gun state. Because there's a whole bunch of ninjas, a whole bunch of rappers that, you know, hey, hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey. All right, guys. So the show opened up with a DoorDash clip where... This father and son ordered um, something from, I don't know, their favorite store. And uh, it included a milkshake. The guy, the deliverer, before he opened the door and took a sip of this milkshake and handed it to the family. Like, here, here you go, motherfucker. Now, what the, the deliverer did not know was that the family had videotape. Okay, I guess they taped everyone that came in and out of the apartment, whatever the case may be, right? Child, the next day, the father was like, Ugh, he put his lips on my son's milkshake? And Maddie's thing is, listen, don't be so damn lazy. Get your fat ass up and go to the store. Now, I'm not going to lie, okay? There has been some times that I, well, actually a time that I used, who was that? uber eats or doordash i don't remember where i wanted this cheesecake i just had a taste for a child it'd be like five dollars you know and cheesecake factory only like around the corner from me. it's like damn uh you know not far from me but you know you have those moments where you can feel lazy and you'd be like fuck it you know hey uh doordash bring me you know two quarts of ice since i heard about them doordash uber eats people you know eating your french fries and sucking on your milkshake i ain't called them ninjas back you won't give me herpes. Now we move on to Wendy. I can't do all of this. I can't do all of the window. window. I don't know. The story was going in one direction, but Sydney took it in another. And I was saying to myself, did they rehearse this? I, like their energy wasn't good to me. Like, I think we're getting used to seeing even Miss Sophia or Funky Dineva that it's hard for us to accept somebody else. Because we love their dynamic, you know. Sydney Star kind of has that energy of um, Tiffany Pollard. But it doesn't work well with Maddie. Like how I Love New York works well with Maddie. Like, I don't know. Like, Sydney Star's energy was either too much or too little. We were supposed to be telling this story about Wendy Williams' child. And it ended up turning into, uh, you know, the... The things that are synonymous with the gay life, like child, this is just not synonymous with the gay men. It's also synonymous with the gay women. You know, you'll find a lot of couples where you have someone older and someone underage. That is just is what it is because a lot of times you deal with a lot of runaway young people 
and uh, how you resolve that is to find you an older person who is already established and live with them and let them hunch and fuck all over you. Kind of like the Star Milan people, you know? That should be real. But anyway, Sydney was like, oh yeah, I want me some old little Kev. And uh, Maddie was like, hey, don't hey, don't be soliciting no child on my show, god on it. He was like, she, uh, Sydney Star was like, uh, he's grown. He is a grown man. He 18 years old. She said, that's too young, girl. That's too young. It is too young. Sydney Star was like, listen, if you young, dumb, and full, I said, girl, you can be buying Reeboks forever. Sydney Star, you are being fined $40. For paying the bond for a trade, a $4,000 bond, okay, to be released from jail falling for the okie dokie. Okie dokie, skim scammity, flim flammity, shim shammity. Allowing him to come to your house for a whole week, screw you up. Then disappear with the dingling and the $4,000. Pay at the door. Monica's divorce. Listen, you know they've been saying a long time that uh monica's husband has been cheating on her and listen the worst the worst feeling in the world is to have whoever you messing with back and then you find out the person who you've been out here in the street swinging for talking about that's my man get off my back leave me the f alone you know and you you swinging on all these hoes just trying to tell you that your man ain't shit. The worst thing in the world is to find out that all the rumors was true. Now, do I believe that the rumors were true? Or that she knew that the rumors were true? Yeah. It just was she wasn't ready to admit it. She getting this divorce. Okay. She got this divorce. She didn't got the papers on the niggas. Okay. Niggas, these are the divorces papers. And then Sydney Starr turned it into something else with it was Monica versus. Uh, Brandy. And why do y'all say that, that Brandy is the vocal Bible? No, the vocal Bibles are dead. I mean, shit, she could be the vocal, like, they said she was a vocal notepad. No, she's like the vocal sticky. What y'all talking about? Let me do this right quick. So, in Baltimore, because I recognize that Doug anyway, because they don't say hot dog, they say hot Doug. Okay, I know that Doug anyway. I know y'all not down there in Baltimore accepting that dog meat as chicken. Moving on. To, um, Nipsey Hussle, right? And um, let's say this. Uh, Maddie became very passionate in this part because um, Nipsey Hussle has um, said some things along the way. You know that he is associated with Dr. Sebi. He has also said that they are pushing the gay agenda on a black male, the emasculation of the... Listen, no, I, don't, I don't believe that. You know, I don't believe that. I believe nowadays, black, white, Asian, Puerto Rican, whatever it is, they're allowing people to be free with their sexuality, period. You know, I don't believe anything about a gay agenda, the emasculation of the black man. Listen, if they want to put a dress on or a wig on, whatever that is, that is their individual choices. That's all I have to say about that. Okay. Because listen, although they say they always quick to put a black man in a dress. Let me tell you something. It's a lot of straight white men who we still be like, is he gay? Like the white man really and truly has like some... I don't want to say homosexual tendencies and they be straight as hell. So you can't say that, you know, and just, you know, limit it to us. When white men do a lot of gay shit and they be straight, it's just that it's accepted. What I also want to end the Nipsey Hustle situation with is that if you guys are going to give credit to Tupac and for the fuck shit that he has done you know y'all minimalize the f stuff that was involved with tupac but you you know you hold him up on a pedestal you need to do the same thing with nipsey hustle 
But what I will say about Nipsey Hussle, and this time I'm going to end it. What Boozy told me was, or told the viewers on the DJ Vlad interview, was that your hood will kill you. You stay in your own hood and it will kill you. No matter how much your community loves you, it's going to be one green out monster to hate and you. Like even, um, even with this, when you get your first real job, this is just with regular folks. The first thing you do is move the fuck away from the hood. So if the regular people move the hell away from the hood when you get your first real job, why the hell wouldn't a rapper do it? But I understand that he wanted to give back to the community and do something better with his hood. Move away from the hood when you get successful because it will kill you. So then we get to the cussing pastor. Listen, the cussing pastor tore me up. Evelyn Braxton, you a bill of bitch. You're the reason that your daughters are so fucking dysfunctional. I don't know you. Hadn't ever said anything disparaging about you. Hell, in fact, I ain't never said nothing about your damn ass. But you choose to come at me. Understand. And that's what people are saying. Well, you shouldn't go after the lady. You shouldn't say what you said about her. Then the lady should have stayed in her damn place and not come at me. You slap me, I'm not the motherfucker that's going to turn the other cheek. I'm coming at your ass. And Judge Maybelline, how in the fuck you going to be a judge on the TV? And you said you didn't know who I was, and you ran on the word of somebody else, no evidence. Both of you motherfuckers can kiss the entire inside of my ass. I'm not the one that you want to play with. You want a war, then damn it, you got one. I ain't going to lie. I mean, you know, he was dragging Evelyn Braxton. Evelyn Braxton had something to say about, um, you know, how, the way uh, the cousin pastor delivers his message. The cousin pastor responded with, bitch, you need to worry about your children who messed up out here. Okay, I agree with him. But child, when that white shit started coming out the corner of his mouth, I was like, damn, you couldn't retape that? What is that? A woman who had two uter uteruses uterus is, had a baby boy and then 26 days later he, she had twins I said what kind of pussy is that these are the new millennial sitcoms right and I think you're going to be surprised with who I say has to go. But um, this, the um, shows are the Steve Harvey Show, the Bernie Mac Show, Wayans Brothers, and Jamie Foxx. Now, I'm going to say this. It's between Steve Harvey and the Wayans Brothers. Only because I didn't really watch both shows like that they were they were good shows it's just for some reason i was just more into bernie mac and jamie fox so my choice would probably be and i can't even say the wayans brother because the wayans brothers i still love them you know even though i really wasn't into them like that for that particular show everything the wayans family do i support it except for that damn show but um, I would have to say Steve Harvey because Steve Harvey has just not been my most favorite person anyway guys remember this the same people you meet on the way up will always be the same people you meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves. Have a good one.